Welcome back, everyone, to another great edition of Jazzy Jeff's Trading Card Review Series, Episode 114. Welcome back, everyone. And, of course, happy December, happy end of the year. Uh, this is as close to a Christmas episode as you're going to get. But if you think about it, with the blue and the reds and the yellows and the greens and all the different colors and all the different rangers, it feels kind of Christmassy, or at least it looks pretty Christmassy, especially the red and the green. Before I dive in today's episode, I obviously wanted to make a quick uh, statement um, to the about the passing of Jason David Frank. Obviously, extremely sad, extremely unfortunate. Um, wanted to pull out a couple of my favorite Green Ranger trading cards, of course. He played Tommy, as many of you know. And of course, I pulled out some of my Green Ranger tapes, as well as some of my Green Ranger collectibles. So, with his passing, I kind of was thinking about uh, Power Ranger cards, and it made me go back <clears throat> and dig these out. And upon digging these out, I started looking at my Power Ranger cards, and I couldn't believe how many different packs, how many different variations, series, and just types of cards that I've reviewed over the years. Now with this being episode 114, I have certainly reviewed many different types. I mean, we got stickers from the movie, different series from the TV show, even the movie trading cards. So I've done a lot of episodes. I've talked about the Power Rangers quite a lot on this channel. And obviously for the diehard fans out there, as well as the new fans, I will include links to all of the past episodes that I've done on the Rangers uh, in the description below, of course. So with all that being said, that brings us to the topic of today's trading card episode, which is a special episode. Uh, I'm not opening up a new pack of cards. Uh, most of these cards are cards that you may have seen before if you've watched previous episodes, but going back and digging out these cards and looking through all these different series and variations, I couldn't help but think of monsters, uh, especially this was over the month of October, spilling into November, and I kind of ran out of time to incorporate, you know, a monsters episode into the month of October. So here we are now in December. So that being said, monsters is the name of the game, monster trading cards specifically, and I'm just going to dive right in. So if, if we're talking monsters, I got to start right away, of course, with the Frankenstein monster, the infamous episode where... Rita resurrects the Frankenstein monster, or at least the Power Rangers version of the monster. So those cards are always fun cards. Those are great. And then, of course, if we're talking monsters or more specifically evil space aliens, I've got to start with these guys, the Putty Patrol, especially the Rita ones. They were the ones that looked more like clay and looked more like the original... <clears throat> The original series, the Zur Ranger uh, television show, uh, kept a lot of the original footage, but then the American release kind of added these redone costumes that were really piss poor, with like black lines under the armpits and stuff. So there's a there's a double, actually a couple triples and doubles here, but um, unfortunately I don't have any good putty cards. Um, but if you watch the season one, or at least the earlier episodes of the show, you'll see some great uh, claymation and just great footage of the putties when they just looked more evil, more badass. They usually had weapons that were made of clay. Oh, 
They were cool monsters, and then when the Lord Zed ones came around, they were okay. I thought the Z was kind of corny, but then the fact that they just, like, exploded was like, eh. But it was still cool claymation footage. So, uh, here is a monster I don't know a lot about. I forget Madame Woe. If memory serves me right, I think she could put spells on people and command them and stuff like that. Um, but there's Madame Woe. And then, love this monster. Would have loved to have had the toy of this. I don't even know if there is a toy of this. Obviously, leave a comment if you know. But this is Shellshock, the infamous monster with a traffic light coming out of its shell. <laughs> So, very strange, very bizarre. So, continuing with this special edition episode, not only will I be highlighting Evil Space Aliens trading cards, but I will also be highlighting some of the figures and action figures, toys, collectibles, what have you, from my collection. Some of these I have the action figures of, some of them I don't. So, let's just roll right into it. So, up first... I'm hitting you hard with Goldar. I'm sure a lot of you remember this card. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are very familiar with Goldar. One of the most popular villains on the show. I love the Rita Repulsa era uh, Goldar. He was more badass, more evil. Badass with the wings. He looks badass without the wings. I always thought Goldar was cool. But by season three with him and Rito. Let me see. What do we have in here? Anything good? Oh, I'm so hungry. I could eat anything. Great, cause this looks good. No, oh, maybe no. not. Hasta la vista, fishy. All right, starting up with another heavy hitter. I have a ton of him for some reason, but Babu. I always loved that name. Always thought that was a really great name for a bad guy. I have a ton of his cards. Uh, this was another monster from the Japanese series that always stood out to me. He looked really good, really interesting, really clever. You know, he's got, he's wearing things that a human should have on. He's got sort of like gold and other trinkets and metal and almost, it's like he's wearing glasses, but then he's some kind of monkey creature. And then yet again, another alternate card with like different colors and stuff. Like I said, it's bizarre to me, and it blows my mind, how many different types of just Power Ranger trading cards there are. If I can just get all those in the shot, you know, they've they certainly released a lot of different types of cards over the years. Of course, to keep up with the figures, I have the Babu Collectible. These were the three-inch figures, or two and a half, or 3.5, whatever the official size is. I can't seem to recall, but they're the little mini collector ones. And then, of course, you can't have Babu without Squat, and I only have one Squat card. And then, of course, I have the little mini Squat figure. These were from 1994, if memory serves me right. And, you know, they don't move or bend or anything, but they look really cool, and they're great. You know, they're great for, like, shelf collectors if you want to be able to display little stuff. These guys are great. <clears throat> this next figure I do not have a trading card of. I can't recall where I found him, but his name is Silverhorn. I'm still trying to figure out where his horns are because those are clearly spikes coming out of him. But regardless, weird name and weird looks aside, still really like this guy. Uh, he's the only one that has writing on the bottom of him, so I don't know if he's some kind of alternate one or if he was a part of a specific set, but love this guy, really wicked looking, love the evil space aliens from this show. <laughs> that brings us to the larger toys the regular toy line which would have been 
what is that, six inches, five inches, something like that. So, but the normal kind of standard action figures would have been these guys right here. So up first, I'll start with the Stag Beetle. So kind of a cool name. Uh, his horns move, of course, when you push his push the little lever on his back. He's got some movement, a little bit of, uh, you know, he's not too bad. He's, of course, they have, like, the Ninja Turtle legs, the Ninja Turtle arms. So these were nice. Bandai did a really good job with these. Another monster I don't know a ton about, but love the look of him. Found him years ago. Uh, this one I just recently picked up, so I was really happy about not filming this episode. Uh, I had this one when I was younger and then gave it away to a cousin, and now I have it again. Um, this guy has probably one of the lamest names of all. It is Two-Headed Parrot. So there you go. They couldn't come up with anything more clever. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have his missile or missiles. I believe he came with more than one, but a little red missile would go in there, which he would then shoot out. Um, but yeah, kind of a weird looking one, not the best toy to play with, but I will say love the color and I just love, love the look of him. Another really iconic looking monster. That brings me to the final of these, of these bad guys, these villains. And I have the card of him. It is I guy and I guy is perhaps still one of my favorite monsters from the series had him when I was younger gave him away to a cousin, and then I acquired him years ago. Once again, I can't remember where. Maybe some of this was from the Retro Emporium. If so, thank you. You know, shout out to the Retro Emporium. Um, but if it was from somewhere else or someone else, I do apologize. Um, but I know I've talked about him many times. I probably even showed him in a previous trading card episode about the Power Rangers. So if you know what's about to happen, well, stand back. But for those that weren't quite ready, hopefully I got you. Hopefully that scared you. But yes, his eyes explode out of his chest. And yeah, there's just, there's a lot going on here. Really freaky looking guy. I love when you turn him upside down, you kind of see another face. You know, he's got some limited movement. He did come with some weapons. He had a little like staff with an eyeball that popped off of it. So just some more eye action. So there you have it, I guy. Oh man! <laughs> All right, so getting towards the end of the show now. That's why I'm bringing out the biggest ones, the heaviest of the hitters. I have the. Uh, once again, I believe it's the 8-inch or 9-inch uh, gigantic, uh, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers toy line, toy series, uh, when they decided to do the larger action figures, the larger rangers with the bigger guns and everything like that. Uh, I have Rhino Blaster over here and Perantis Head over here, but <laughs> well, he certainly looks like a rhino mixed with an armadillo maybe <laughs> but amazing paint jobs just amazing paint colors this guy really screams the 90s i love it you know it's just, it's it's like almost gross looking they're they're like disgusting looking they just don't make awesome looking toys like this even if i wasn't a power rangers fan i could still see myself going to the store and buying these or at least them catching my eye because it's just so wild. I mean, his eyes just look so good. They absolutely look like fish eyes. You know, they've really put a lot of detail into these figures. They don't have a ton of articulation and all that. But, you know, they get the job done and they look amazing. Lately, evil space aliens have become a real safety hazard. Earth's only hope, the Power Rangers. Oh, yeah? No one can stop us. So there you have it. Wanted to focus on some evil space aliens from the Power Ranger toy line, from Rita Repulsa era, from the Lord Zed era. Forgot to bring that up. Those two last ones were from the Lord Zed era. Um, but before I officially end, as you always know, I got to show 
a toy at the end. Even though I showed toys, I held the best ones for the very end. So of course, of all of the evil space aliens from all the different seasons, including Zeo, my favorite evil space alien of all time will for always and ever be the King Sphinx. Yes, the King Sphinx was awesome to me. Yes, he may not be as original as the others. He may not look as crazy or creative as the others, but there's just something about a live living Sphinx that looks like a half man, half dog with tombstone wings that just phew, gets my gears going. And no matter what toy line, no matter what toy, every version of him is just awesome. This version looks incredible. And this is the Micro Machines version. Just really neat. He's screaming. His mouth is open. He just looks gnarly. A really awesome, cool toy and just really cool figure. But of course, it doesn't end there. I got one more. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. The big giant version, just like those other two, of King Motherfucking Sphinx. So, yes, by Bandai. So, there you have it. One of the originals, one of the first early monsters from the show. Uh, they made a lot of toys and a lot of merchandise based on him. I remember him being in coloring books, on posters. He was always in the commercials and stuff. One last thing of note, just to drag this episode out a little longer. These guys always looked a little bit crisper, a little bit cooler, a little bit nicer. I don't know if, there's an, if they are an alternate line or if those figures exist, but the King Sphinx there looks incredible to me. So, just another little slice of weird lore. Oh, and of course, he's got a biography. Thanks so much for watching. I am Jazzy Jeff, and this has been another great episode of Jazzy Jeff's Trading Card Review Series, episode 114. Thanks for watching. Huh? Don't mention yeah. it? You're the best friend I ever had! How could I not mention it? You're gonna...